JPA stands for Java Persistence API. It is a standard from Oracle to do object relational mapping. That is to map our objects to the database table rows and vice versa. As a part of any standard, Oracle provides specification and an API. The specification is for the JPA providers or vendors like Hibernate, Eclipse Link, Toplink and Apache Open JPA. The API is for people like us, the developers, to master. Once JPA came in, we as developers need not learn Hibernate, Eclipse Link, Toplink, Open JPA's APIs separately. We can simply learn the JPA API and all these vendors here support this API. That's the power of JPA. But in the open source world, a lot of times the standards, they work the reverse way. That is, Hibernate was popular long, long ago, even before JPA was thought of. And several developers like me have learned the Hibernate API, which is proprietary to Hibernate. But uh, I should say that JPA has borrowed a lot of things from Hibernate. Now, as developers, we'll only learn the JPA API and we can use any of these frameworks. To create a JPA application, if you are familiar with Hibernate, you already know the steps. You create an entity, a persistence XML and DAO. An entity is a plain old Java object. It could be an order, a product, an item, a person, a student, etc. You mark this entity with JPA annotations so that you can map the object's properties or fields to database columns. Second, you come up with a persistence.xml. This is the configuration file for JPA within which you can define the database and several other things. Finally, you create a DAO class which performs the database CRUD operations using the JPA API. This is similar to Hibernate where you created a POJO, the Hibernate configuration file and then a DAO class. So if you know the Hibernate API, it's very straightforward to understand the JPA API. Session factory in Hibernate is replaced with entity manager factory. Session becomes entity manager. So using the entity manager, we can perform persist, which is creation, merge, which is updation, get is replaced by find. In Hibernate, we used to call it get or load. In JPA, it's find to select a set of rows or to retrieve data. Finally, delete is remove in case of JPA. So it's persist to create, merge to update, find to read, remove to delete. So JPA has definitely improved over Hibernate's pitfalls. A lot of new features were introduced and also the API is a lot more better than that of Hibernate. Finally, it also gives us several callback annotations. So if you want to implement some lifecycle methods before saving, for example, an object into database if you want to do certain work you can simply create a method mark it with this pre persist annotation and uh, the jpa providers will call that method before they save the data to the database similarly post persist pre update